Tony Blash, um, your team uh, had five goals and then the empty netter. How much life did you have in your room just on a season high in goals scored? How much what? How much life did you feel in your room? Because yeah, yeah. Well, I listen, um, you know, as I said to the guys uh, before practice today, um, you know, scoring does matter. And when you score, uh, you're allowed to make mistakes. And, and when you don't score, you can't make any mistakes, you know. And, and um, you know, so the fact we were able to score, I think we've scored a little bit more here in the last little bit, uh, I think gives confidence to, to everybody on the ice. It gives confidence that we can, uh, you know, have a game where maybe you get down early and you can come back. Um, I thought we scored some nice goals. I thought we did some things offensively that you have to do to be successful. So um, certainly we want to continue to score more. We'd love to score tons. We'd love to be a team uh, that, that, that can score to that level. Now, we also got to make sure we're better defensively and, and we got to be better than we were the other night to win tomorrow. Uh, the power play streak came to an end in, uh, in games uh, consecutive with a power play goal, but it's perked up a little bit. How so? Um... One is we've gotten this, we've just spent more time in the zone. Honestly, if you look at power plays and penalty kills, it's all about spending time in the zone. If you in in and, and that means winning faceoffs, uh, no unforced errors on 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 bad turnovers or lack of execution. That means entries into the zone, and I think we've done more of all three of those. We, we've we've won a few more faceoffs, not just the pure win, but when you win, do you keep it in the zone? Um, we've had less unforced errors, meaning, uh, you know, not out of their pressure, not, not, nothing like that. We just give the puck away for, for no reason. And then, and then our entries have been uh, better, I think, in the last bit. So when you do that, you spend more time in the zone. The more time you spend in the zone, the better chance the puck's going to go in the net on, in special league teams. Thank you, sir. Yep. Next up, Trevor Thompson, Fox Sports Detroit. Last from the standpoint of awareness and playing for the guy next to you and um, the teammate camaraderie um, aspect of things, what did you think of uh, what Mantha did for uh, Vladi the other night to cap the game off? Uh, you know, I, th I think it was, a, 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 you know, obviously an unselfish play. Uh, uh, you know, guys care about each other. They want to be good teammates. And, you know, it was definitely an unselfish play and a play that um, I think shows that. I think our guys do care about each other. I think they are good teammates. I think they, they want to win for each other. I think they've dug in and worked together. We've worked through hard times. We, it hasn't always been easy here, but that shows the character of people. I think we've got a room full of character. Um, because of the, the COVID and the protocols and um, not being able to do some things you might do on the road and the number of new faces you've had, all that into consideration, what are your thoughts on the chemistry and how the team has come together inside the room from that aspect for you guys this year? Yeah, I thought it's been pretty good. You know, you're, you're limited from some of the social functions, maybe away from the rink that you could normally do that I think are important things um, to, to grow as, you know, as families really together in a lot of cases and as a group of guys. And, and so that's hard, but, but I think, um, you know, we've got a good group of people. They, 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 they're, they're, they're good, honest people. They work hard, they want to win. And I think the biggest thing is I think we're galvanized by the, um, the, the work that we want to put in to try to be a better hockey team here. And, and that's probably the biggest thing that's galvanized us. And the last thing for me, just along those lines as well, is there anything you've been able to do, um, given the structure of things that has helped or aided in building chemistry and guys getting to know one another uh, off the ice? Not, not really enough, and, and it's just one of those years for two reasons, Trevor. One, uh, we just can't do much, and so there's just not really a whole lot we can do that way. Uh, and two, uh, the schedule's such that, you know, you are playing every other night in a lot of cases, and it just, uh, uh, you know, it becomes really difficult to, to do anything other than kind of be in your routine. The biggest thing I would say to you, though, again, is I think chemistry is born from guys uh, having a common goal of, of – uh, working together um, to, to try to make this a, a better hockey team and try to get our program uh, into a better spot. I think our guys are galvanized by that. So a lot of this stuff really this year does have to happen like on the ice, literally. The, the coming together in that way. Okay. Thanks, Flash. Yeah. Next question from Ansar Khan with them live. Yeah, Jeff, uh, the goals differential in the third period, much worse than, than the first two. What are you seeing there? Is it the case of just running out of steam uh, too many nights? Um, no, I don't think it's been running out of steam. You know, if you look at some of those games, uh, you know, like some of that's going to be certainly like the Chicago game um, where you get down and, and then it just kind of snowballs on you. 
uh, you know, the other night was totally different. Obviously, we have a lead uh, against a really good team. They're going to push for sure. Uh, you know, we kept it out of our net till under four or four-ish, I guess. And and um, uh, and then once it came, then they're going to come hard. And it's unfortunate those goals go in. But I don't think it's a lack of, uh, of, of losing our steam or, or lack of anything that way. I think it's just been situational. And uh, here, as you start the second half, uh, you know, the team looks about as healthy as it's been, uh, you know, other than Bertuzzi uh, in a while. Uh, how much uh, does that kind of provide hope that uh, things could be better in the second half? Well, I think when you look at our, our record, um, you know, I think if you take away the stretch where we missed five guys to COVID, um, I think the record looks a lot better. So, you know, that gives you hope that you can continue that moving forward here. I think if you look at, you know, we, I think we lost the three games without Larks. He's a big piece, you know, sometimes not the number of guys you're missing, but what pieces, um, you know, certainly Bertuzzi is a big piece for our team and, and we'll miss him. But um, we have hope because, uh, you know, I think we've proven to ourselves that when we're healthy and we, we play the right way, we are in position to win hockey games. And if we could start scoring a little bit more uh, while playing the right way, not necessarily the, the way we did the other night, while playing the right way, I think we'll put ourselves in position to win more games. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Next up, Max Boltman with The Athletic. Hey, Jeff. Uh, Glenn Dunning got a, a lot of the, the point line this weekend. I know he usually gets matchups like that. I'm just curious. You know, when he's out there against offensive players like that, what are some of the little ways that he goes about slowing guys like that down? Well, first off, it's not just him. It's that line. Um, you know, I think they've really played well together as a group. They, they bring little different characteristics to it. Um, but what they do well is, honestly, it starts by not playing in their end a whole bunch. You know, that's when they've had the most success is, is – uh, they play simple, they put pucks behind, they forecheck well, they play in the O zone, and then they track really hard so that our D can stay up and we can force the puck out and, again, not play in the D zone. I think anybody, you know, if you, if you start playing against the best players on the other team on a night-to-night -night basis and all you're doing is defending, it gets hard. You're going to make some mistakes. And I think all three of them are in their own way uh, solid defensive players, but I think the biggest key is just uh, the, the work ethic and the simplicity in which they play uh, creates the ice to be uh, tilted in, in the direction of the opponent's goal. And, and if you can do that, you know, the best players uh, on the other teams don't want to defend all night. They want to have the puck. And if we can force them to defend all night, it's advantage us. And then with the three of them, because I, I was looking at this the other day and they are like winning most of their matchups um, on just like an expected goals. I don't know. You don't like the public version of that stat, but um, why do they work so well together? Is it just the stylistic blend? Is it the same mindset? Like, why does it work so well together? Uh, probably both of those. You know, I think from a stylistic blend, um, you know, Helmer can really help that line too because of the speed that, that, that he can play with. So it makes the other two even faster. They both, both uh, Glennie and, and, and Earns are, are solid skaters that work really hard. So they, they make themselves faster with their work ethic, but, but Helms brings that to another level in terms of speed. And so if they ever get them, it allows them to play really aggressive in the ozone on a four check and in an ozone hound because they know they can win the race coming back to our end. And so I think that stylistic blend's important. And I think the fact they have the mindset that um, they're going to keep it simple. They're not going to try to make it more complicated and they're going to make the opponent defend. That's the number one thing. And I think sometimes uh, when it's, when it's skilled players playing against other skilled players, they want to make lots of plays and you end up turning pucks over and now you actually end up defending because of it. So that's, that's why it can be a real advantage if you can have a line that, that can check the other team's best line. Thanks. Yep. Next up, Ted Colton with the Detroit News. Oh, there we go. Just a quick thought on Carolina, Jeff. I mean, you mentioned, you kind of alluded to it the other night. I mean, Tampa's Tampa and they're playing great hockey, but can Carolina make the argument that, hey, they're just as good, do you think, or what? Well, not until they beat them in a, in a playoff series or, you know, not that they've played in a playoff series, but until they can get stand on top of the mountain the way Tampa does or did, uh, I don't know that you can make that argument, but they're certainly right there. There's zero doubt about that. And, you know, first they got a real dangerous lineup and they got a lot of really good players in that lineup. Uh, um, you know, Trochuk has uh, uh, made them even more dangerous, whether he's in or out, I'm not sure, but he's made them even more dangerous that trade. 
I think Stahl uh, is one of the most underrated players in the league. I think he, he, he goes out and he crushes teams' uh, best players with his good defensive ability, and then, and then he creates because of uh, he plays in the Ozone a bunch. Like he, to me, is a, a real big asset to that team. And, I'm, you know, and that doesn't talk about Ajo, Teravine, and Sveshnikov. So they got right. danger up top on the back end. Um, again, they got one of the more underrated uh, defensemen in the league in Slavin. I think he's one of the best. Um, you know, so they're similar to Tampa in the sense that they got, you know, two and three and four really good defensemen on the back end, um, you know, so, and then they play, a, 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 they're all on the same page and how they play. It's a, 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 an aggressive style. Um, there's no in between um, and they play on the same page. So they're, a, they're an excellent hockey team. They're one of the best in the league without a doubt. Is it like, a, is it basically just a learning or growing process for any team like that? I mean, learning to get to that next level. I mean, it happened to Tampa, I guess, in a way too. I mean. Well, I think it starts, you build, you know, and, and you, you add, you add really good players and that's what they've done over time here. You know, you, 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 you get, you know, you draft a slave and a Pesci later in, in some later rounds, you, you find, you know, because you have some other assets, you get, you know, you get a guy like Dougie Hamilton, um, you know, and then, and then the Yahoo's and the, and the Svechnikov's and all that, and you, you build by, by, by the types of players you have. And then, and then you grow in confidence and you grow in style and you grow in, in, uh, identity and, and they've grown in all those things over the last couple of years under Rod for sure. And, and so, you know, I think they they know what their identity is. They know how they want to play and, and their players are all growing and, and, uh, are becoming real, real good players at their positions. Perfect. So honey, thanks, Jeff. Thank you. That's it for us today. Thanks, everyone.